So a brief review of box plots. A box plot is a way to organize our data and we split the data into four equal pieces. Those pieces may not always look equal when looking at the plot itself, but we know for sure that 25% of the data is in each section. The minimum value and the maximum value are the easiest to find in the data set and they're the lower ends of our box plots. There are three other important numbers and they're the two numbers that form the sides of the box and then the number that is somewhere inside of the box. This is quartile one and it is the middle of the lower 50% of the data. It's the median of the lower half. This is quartile three, and it is the median of this upper half of data. So I'm writing the word median again. Quartile one and quartile three are both medians. We connect them. They're also called box and whiskers plots because these look like little whiskers. And then this number is our median. You actually can also refer to it as quartile two, but it's the median for all of the data for our entire set. So it's the number that's exactly in the middle when we put the data in order. 25% of our data is here, 25% is here, and in each of these sections we have 25%, one fourth or one quarter of all the data, okay? So the minimum. The minimum is the smallest value in the data set. Of course, the maximum is the largest and that's here at C. The first quartile, Q1, it is, write this, it is the median of the lower half of the data, okay? And it is our divider for the lowest 20, sorry, here it is. It's our divider, the lowest 25% of the data is between it and the median, okay? The upper 75% of the data is also above it. So that's a couple of different ways to look at it. But in this case, we're gonna say it represents the lowest 25% of our data. Likewise, the third quartile is the median of the upper half. Okay, so this is our third quartile. 25% of the data is above it, 75% of the data is below it. It represents the first 75th. So 25, 50, 75. By the time we've gone through that much data, we've made our way to quartile three. We also refer to it sometimes as the 75th percentile. This would be the 25th percentile, the 50th percentile. All right, so that's D. So then by default, the middle value of the data, when it's arranged least to greatest, that's our overall median. It's also actually technically quartile two there in the middle. Okay, Jason plays basketball on his high school team. He played nine games, so we have nine values in our data set, but he got hurt and he couldn't finish the season. The data set represents the number of baskets he earned in each game. So when you're doing box plots, it is important that it's in order from least to greatest. So starting with nine, the next number I see is I have a 12. Looks like 14, 16, 17, 18, a 20, oh, that's supposed to be a comma, a 27, and a 33, okay? So there's our data in order. There should be nine of them, two, four, six, eight, nine, sure enough. And since we have nine, we know we can count in one, two, three, four from each end. And this number here is in the middle all by itself. This is the median of our data. The minimum value in our data set was nine. The maximum was 33. And the median is actually 17. But in order to find the first quartile, so the first quartile is going to be the middle of the lower half of the data. And since we have four numbers, the first, the second, it's here. It's halfway in between 12 and 14, which I'm sure you can see is 13. On the upper end, we also have four numbers in our data set. 
and our median is gonna fall right here, but this one is falling in between 20 and 27. If you're not sure what that is, you can just add those and go ahead and get their sum and divide by two. So 23.5 is going to be our quartile three value, okay? All right, graph the data. Let's make a box plot. All right, we have to go from nine to 33. I seriously doubt I can count by ones. Let me count by twos. Eight, nine, 10. Yeah, we would not have been able to count by ones. Okay, so there's our data. Let's go ahead. Our minimum goes down here. So nine, halfway in between eight and 10. Our maximum is up here, halfway in between 33 and 34. Okay, and then the median will be exactly in, well, it doesn't literally physically fall between those values, but it is the middle value when we put them in order. The first quartile is gonna be the left side of our box at 13, and the third quartile, so 23 would be exactly halfway in between. Let me go halfway in between again. We're just kind of approximating, but all right. So there's our box, and then our whiskers. So remember, you might be tempted to think, well, this looks like the largest of the four pieces, so there must be more numbers there. There are not more numbers. There are equal values from the data set in each of these sections. This is just stretched out, so there's more spread. There's more separation in these values on the high end. And you can kind of see that on the low end, the numbers were pretty close together from 9 to 16. We, you know, only span seven, but from 18 up to 33, there's certainly a much broader spread there. All right, interpret the data. What does the first quartile represent? Our first quartile, by the way, was 13. Well, that represents, remember, the lower 25th percent of the data, and it was also the median of the lower half of the data. The third quartile, so starting from the bottom, we have 25, 50, 75. It represents the lower 75% of the data. It's also the cutoff for our upper 25%, but it's our lower 75% of the data. And we found it, it was the median of the upper half. So it's a number that was in the middle when we arranged those in order. All right, we have some rivers in the US. Excuse me, I don't know how to pronounce them all. Um, let's count them. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 rivers, and we're going to make a box plot. So we have 12 items in our data set, an even number. And even when we split 12 and half, six and six, we're gonna have even numbers in the lower and upper half of the data. So we're gonna to have to calculate the median every time. So coming in from the high end, one, two, three, four, five, six, I know that right here in between the Ohio and the Red Rivers would be our median. I have 1,310, 1,290. The number that's exactly halfway between them is 1,300. If you were to add those two numbers together, get their sum and divide by two, you would get 1300. Now I have six numbers in my lower half. So if I come in three from each end, exactly halfway in between them will be our Q1. So we need to average these two numbers. We have 1240 and the 1040. We get 2,280, which we're gonna cut in half. So Q1 is 1,140. At the high end, we need to find Q3, which again, you should be able to come in three from either end and it's gonna be halfway in between our 1,900 and our 1,460. So cut that in half and we have 1,680. All right, those are the five values because we know the min and the max that we need to use to graph any set of data using box plots. 
So we're going from roughly 900 up to about 2,300. I can probably count by hundreds to make that happen. So 900, 1,000, 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. So I'm counting by hundreds. I'm just only writing every other one, okay? 1,700, 1,800, 1,900. 2,000, 2,100, 2,200, 2,300, 2,400, 2,500, okay? All right, that works. So our lowest value is 926. We'll just approximate that, that's our minimum. Our largest value is 2,340, almost halfway in between these two, but closer to 2,300. Quartile three is at 1,680, so that's going to be closer to 1,700 than 1,600. Our median's exactly at 1,300, and our lower quartile's at 1,140. So again, closer to 1,100 than 1,200. All right, so these are the corners, the edges, excuse me, of our boxes, and here are our box plots and name the rivers that make up the lower quartile. So that's everything that was below Q1. It's gonna be these three rivers. And they do ask us to name the rivers, so we should list them. And there you go, I hope you got those right. Oh, sorry, here you go. Couldn't see what I wrote down there.